Hey what's up everyone? I thought I should show a quick assembly video on my big Newman motor design. With all the STL files I bet it could get confusing. So if a picture can speak a thousand words, I better do a video. Please hit that like button friend. I want to take the opportunity to explain my thoughts behind this design in order to illustrate how and why the parts fit together. Here, the rotor is designed to snugly accept the 8mm rotor shaft. On each side of the rotor, there is a rotor brake that screws onto the rotor's body. It is intended to keep the rotor rigid on the shaft, similar to a brake. The rotor, bearings, and stator are designed with tight tolerances. Assembly is made easy with two keyed parts, the two screws. Once assembled, you will have a strong stator and rotor assembly with just a slight amount of wiggle room. Additionally, the bearings are securely locked into slots to ensure stability. There are two identical stator coils, each consisting of two 500-turn 20-gauge wires, with a combined weight of approximately 4.25 pounds. The concept is to activate one set of coils, and then the other set at a 180-degree phase difference, in order to achieve maximum torque without utilizing an H-bridge. However, a challenge with having this many turns is that it requires a higher voltage. In this case, the system is operated with a 98 volt DC power source using a boost converter to meet the voltage requirements. Once the stator is positioned between the coils, end caps are used to securely hold everything together. These end caps provide a firm grip, ensuring that the stator and coils remain tightly sandwiched in place. In terms of aesthetics, the logo plates are optional, but can enhance the overall look. To ensure a secure assembly, eight bolts are used to tightly attach both end caps to the stator. I've dedicated significant effort to refining this design over the course of four different motors. At this stage, I believe there isn't much more to add to the design. I've also designed decorative side plates for this motor, although I've chosen not to include them in this version. However, they can be easily added if desired. When you download this design, You'll find optical or commutation files that allow for precise triggering of the motor at key rotor positions. For now, I've decided to experiment with the brushed commutator. On the right side, you'll notice a solid copper ring with a wire that connects to only one segment on the left side. Additionally, there are two smaller segments that serve the purpose of providing a smooth track for the brushes to slide across. These segments also act as a buffer, helping to dissipate any heat away from the PLA material. The circuit is quite basic, designed to be as simple as possible while maintaining reliability. I have actually replaced the MOSFETs with IGBTs, but IRF 260P MOSFETs also work well. Utilize ultra-fast diodes positioned just off the collector or source pins to direct back electromotive force through a load. I made a mistake in the schematic. Instead of connecting the load to ground, connect the negative side of the load back to your input positive. In my case, I connect the negative side of my load to my ADV positive. Take a look at the commutator. The right side is connected to your low voltage positive. Every 180 degrees, it will trigger either MOSFET Use 1 watt resistors and a 3 pin terminal block to easily change out MOSFETs if you burn any up. This boost circuit is a beast. Maybe one day I'll try rectifying mains and running this at 110 volts. I bet it will run just fine. But I'm already designing my next motor. This new design will have a ferret epoxy stator core. I've already tested the theory, and it's a game changer. Twenty-four volts boosted to over 90 volts. These IGBTs don't even need a heatsink. The load consists of two 60-watt incandescent bulbs. The commutator stays cool when used in this manner, 
as only a small signal current is used for triggering. Optical is better and has zero friction. I'll transition to it later on, but for now, I have a soft spot for mechanical commutators. Take a look at that peak voltage and the crazy waveform. Each square represents 50 volts, and the frequency varies widely. It may not have high wattage, but trust me, this motor has the most torque of any pulse motor I've made to date. Don't forget to hit that like button and ring the notification bell. If you're not already a subscriber, you might want to see what I'm working on next. 